Yeah, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Continuing our venture onto the worst performing tanks in tier 8, we now come to the heavy tank. And according to Blitz Stars, it is this tank, the Carnarvon, the British tier 8 heavy. As you can see there, it has a 47.88% win rate and a survivability of only 27.88%. So clearly something is not sitting well with the player base in this tank because, well, it's just underperforming massively. And why is that? I mean, is the tank truly that shocking? It's never been an easy heavy tank to play, mainly because it's not strictly a heavy. It's more of a heavy um. And people, what the player base generally think that once they're in a heavy tank, they can front line the damn thing and get away with it. And you really can't in this type of tank. As I say, it's more of a heavy um. When we jump into the overall look at the tank and its parameters, we can see here it's got 1,960 hit points. That's a bit low for a heavy tank, not going to lie. Its armor is a bit thin. On the front of the turret, it's 165, but on the front of the hull, it's 135. The sides and the rear of the turret are 112. That's not much, whereas the hull, 53 and 40 respectively. So you're getting to see the same picture that you saw with the Centurion Mark I. This is a haul down tank. It's not a tank that likes sitting out in the open. View range, well, it's a heavy. 279 is not too shabby. And remember, I've got various equipments and everything loaded. Concealment in camouflage, stationary 33, moving 28 upon firing eight. It's a heavy after all. Now, the DPM is 2,777. It's a British tank, which means it does have pretty good DPM and it has a fantastic reload time, 4.86. That's less than five seconds. So it's got pretty decent penetration, 237 on its AP, 271 on its APCR, and it earned 46. 46 on its HE is pretty low. Remember the light tank, the RU251, that's got 112. Yet this big lumbering heavy only has 46. Dishes out not the best damage for a heavy tank in tier 8, but it dishes out decent damage. 225 for its AP, 190 for its APCR, and 300 for its HE. Aim time, pretty nice, below 3 seconds. Dispersion for a big heavy is not that bad either, 0.312. Gun depression, well, 18 up, 10 down. That's good. It's got gun depression, which tells me it's a ridgeline fighter. Moving down, we have the speed. If you don't forget, this is a heavy. It's meant to be slow. It's meant to be cumbersome. It's got a top speed 34 going forwards, 12 going backwards, with an average speed of 29. Pretty decent terrain crossing, 99% on the road, 84% on the ground, and 61% in the water. Comes with a majority of guns, a tier 7, a tier 8, and a tier 9. I use it with the tier 9. It also has many engines, many turrets, and two sets of tracks. You really need to upgrade this tank to the top equipment to get the best out of it. If you're rolling out in this thing stock, you are going to find it a real pain in the backside, especially against the tier 9s that it will face. Let's have a look at the equipment loadout. Well, for this one, I'm using calibrated shells rather than the rammer. Again, it's got a pretty decent reload. I don't need the rammer. I would rather have that extra penetration pump when I'm facing those tier 9s. I've also got the defense system, which is I, I use is pretty standard on virtually all my tanks. Got the improved optics, bringing that view range up. Without it, the view range goes down, clearly. No point for a camo net. It's a heavy after all. I then use the enhanced gun laying device. Why? Because the supercharge is pretty pointless in this tank. The dispersion on this tank is pretty nice as it is. I'm then using the improved assembly because I want those additional hit points. Again, there's no point me putting 4% additional to my hull armor with the enhanced armor, there's just no point. I'm then using the engine accelerator because why not? Then putting in the vertical stab, bringing that aim time down, no point using the refined gun, I've already got pretty decent dispersion on this thing. 
And then we've got the toolbox and the consumables. Talking of consumables, this thing comes with quite a few. I'm using it with Adrenaline, the, the uh, Ultimate Repair Kit, and the Super Duper Speed Boost. Now, I could change the Speed Boost for that of the Reactive Armor. I'm not using the Reactive Armor, I'm using the Speed Boost because I want to be able to have that additional mobility when I need it. it it's a toss-up between those two in you know, reactive armor and speed boost. I'm just using the speed boost at the moment. Moving over to the provisions. Well, I've got pudding and tea, brings my view range and everything back up again. I've then got the protective kit and I've then got the enhanced sandbag armor just to give me those extra hit points. Loadouts, well, I've got majority of AP, 40 rounds, 13 APCR and seven HE. I, I, I generally find that I don't need so much APCR in this tank. Thing is, there are parts of this tank that people struggle in, and we're going to get to that in the moment, because the biggest part is clearly that of the armour. So looking at the armour, this is the tank facing off against a Tiger II, a tank that it will come across quite a fair bit. And as you can see, frontally, that's not too shabby, 231 millimeters if you get up close and personal. And the Tiger is going to bounce off that. Bottom plate is very open though. One good thing about this tank is it's got 10 degrees of gun depression, so you should be looking at it like this realistically, which closes down these turret uh, exposed points. When it's not hauled down, the turret becomes a little bit more open, as you can see, and so does this plate. So even just slightly hauled down, it becomes very, very difficult to pen. Not so much hauled down, becomes very easy to pen. And that's the thing. I mean, the sides of it are wide open, and so is the rear. I mean, there's no point looking at the rear. Everybody can pen you every day of the week and twice on Sundays. And this is where people, and look, it's not a bad side scraper to an extent. I mean, it will get out of it, but you do need to wiggle that turret thing about this tank is people really underestimate it. They really think that the armor is something more special than what it actually is. And it's not that great. It's good if you put it in the right place. What's this tank actually like to roll out with? And what is it we need to do as players to get the most out of this tank? Because it's not a bad tank. Not really. It's just tricky. Here we are in the Carnarvon rolling out on Black Goldville. And we're only going to have a look at two replays in this tank. I did play five, but you know, you only need to really see two replays to get a feel for this tank. As I say, it's a haul down beast. So you need to keep that in mind when you're playing this tank. You stick this out of the open and everybody's going to be aiming at your lower haul and they're just going to pen you. Simple as that. Good thing about the tank is it does have a pretty reasonable gun. It's it's okay, it's pretty accurate as you can see there. Okay, you're not gonna be dishing out oodles of damage in this thing, but that's not the idea behind the Carnarvon. The idea behind the Carnarvon is little damage very quickly. That's why it's got such a great reload. Now as you see there, that Yag Panther 2 is gone, and we've already given the T28 a bit of a bloody nose as well. This is what you should be looking at doing in this tank. You should be looking at getting spots like I've got here on Black Goldville, which is nice, haul down. Just make sure that the upper plate's got that angle to try and bounce things, and then you can just peek and shoot, which is what this tank loves to do. It loves to peek and shoot. It is on the front line here, I'm not gonna lie. We're not sat at the back sniping, we're on the front line and we're peeking and shooting and keeping as many hit points saved as possible. That is a great shot that came over from the T28, by the way. And, uh, you know, fair play to him. This is a pants shot in return, though. But these things happen. And I did lose a load of hit points on that. Bouncy gun there. Well, it happens. I mean, the, the guns are very bouncy nowadays in Blitz. And I don't know why. I just can't get the penetration on the T28. But not to worry, I'm going to reevaluate my role in this game and we're going to try and get some shots across. We can't do it. Maybe. No, we still can't do it. So we're going to push down in a help out my two mates instead. 
down goes the object 252U. That was a tricky tank. Now we can push onto the Skoda. Again, hugging this ridge, keeping the tank protected as much as possible. You see there, the Skoda, bless him, he's just wide open. And again, he's another ridgeline fighter. And out for the count he goes. Now we've got the Batchaparesque. Down he goes as well, bless him. Only one tank left, so this is how you should be looking to play the Carnarvon. Again, I'm not setting the world on fire here. 1600 damage, that's pretty low realistically. But, as I keep saying in all my videos, the aim of the game is to win. If you do your job, you do your role, you'll win more games. The big damage games in the Ace Masteries come later. That is the point. And if you want to get more effective in playing these tanks, look at how to refine the skills that you've got. We get a third class there. I'm quite happy with that in this tank. It's notoriously difficult to play. It's not the easiest. But if you know where to stick it, and you know your maps, you can have a good time in it. So Ephelum there, my erstwhile and long-suffering teammate, he knocks out 3.4k and gets a first class for his troubles. So this tank can be played well, and you can have good fun in it, but you've just got to remember that hull is very, very open. Moving now on to Normandy. This is a map that this tank actually does like because it's got pretty decent gun depression and it's got stonkingly good upper armor. The thing is, you've got to be careful. I'm getting in the way of Ephelum there, bless him. My fault, not his. So get the penetration in there onto that immediate bottom plate. And this is how good the gun can be. As I said, the Carnarvon is a ridgeline fighter. It likes sitting on these ridges and it likes to just peek over the top and put those shots in. Now, I have to admit, I get absolutely wrecked in this game because I didn't realise that they had the best tank. But we'll see that later. You can see here, we're just poking away at the enemy. We've got them lit up and we're literally just annoying them here. Popping up every now and then and just popping the shots in, poking away, whittling them down, farming them, farming them, farming them. And that's what you should be looking to do in this type of tank. Patience, as I say, is a virtue. Knowing your maps is critical. Because when you know your maps, when you're patient, you can sit here and just plonk shell after shell into the enemy. You can see we've already lost two tanks, so at the moment we are absolutely losing this game. We're up to 1,200 damage now, and we haven't really moved from this position. We're still harassing and annoying the enemy. My toon mate has lost a fair bit of, uh, of his armor, and I'm slowly being whittled down as well. Losing the two tanks was a bit of a loss, but, but I think we've still got pretty much good map control at this moment in time. The enemy is still presenting, and we are able to continue to put shots in. And that is what you should be looking to do in a heavy tank like this. Like I said, it's a heavier. You can sit it on a front line ridge like this and whittle your enemy down, but you just can't push over the top. Now, they're, they're getting frustrated with me so much that they're now throwing HE at me, which is nice, to be fair. I can that. Now I'm only down to 377. But we've managed to take one of their tanks out. We're slowly but surely getting the upper hand in this game and it is ever so slowly the thing is i mean we've knocked up 2189 now we are doing okay we're holding the ridge we've leveled up the amount of tanks we are struggling ourselves because we're in this big lumbering heavy tank and we're losing the head points and the team around us if we look at the mini map well you know i've got a big td sat at the back not really being effective and as long as we continue doing our job, which is harassing the enemy here and making sure that they are not able to push, then we are going to be okay. I can see that there's the SU-130 over there. The guy in the Progetto, by the way, is a really good player from the clan Shatem. They are good. It's a good clan. They are a good team. Um, so he's always going to be a concern. Now, I think here that maybe we can push onto this Progetto. There's the Scarface, he's come out of his perch, so I'm very happy. I think we can push over. Unbeknown to me, however, sat right at the back is a Borsig. And I didn't know that. I hadn't seen the Borsig all game. 
Uh, but there's that uh, T28. Unfortunately, my two mate Heffalumpiers now I've got it all to do, and you know he's a, a well experienced player and knowledgeable enough and skilled enough to really carry this game. I ended up doing 2.86. He's now going to be able to take out this Scarface, maybe. Yes, he does, and that is a fantastic shot, not going to lie. He's wheeled it down, so there's only one out there, and it's the Borsig that wrecked me. And there he is, sat at the back. And you can see there, nobody has put a shot on him. And that is a great shot from Everlump as that Borsig comes round the corner. Everlump here is really, really holding this game together. He has got support in the form of the M6 and the T28, but I think the T28 is AFK. I'm not 100% certain. This is by no means easy for Ephelim. I mean, he's on 96 hit points. He is literally... The, the Borsig just has to breathe in his general direction, and he's going to go down. You can see there that uh, we've got... The M6 is capping. I think the T28 is AFK. And again, Ephelum with the great shot in there, slowly whittling down this little Borsig, who just overcommitted. He hasn't really got much choice. He's got to either kill these tanks or reset that base. Either way, he's got to expose himself. And this is the thing. I mean, it's great sitting at the back. He's a Borsig. He's designed to sit at the back. But... You saw with the SU-130, a great player, by the way, in the SU-130 on the enemy team. He was pushing forward. Sitting at the back is all very nice and well when you're farming damage. But when you're in a situation like this where you've got your enemy capping the base, you have really got no choice. You've got to either commit to combat or you've got to reset the cap. And this is where the Borsig is now struggling. Heffalump has put himself in a great position, so he's got every single area covered if the Borsig does make a break for it to make for the cap. And we've got the M6 on the cap. It's a lost game for the Borsig, when realistically they did at one point have the upper hand. And that's the thing. So, great play here by Heffalump. Puts one more in. Bates captured. Has he able to finish him off? Maybe. No, he just can't do it. But there you go. And that is an effective game in the Carnarvon. I like the Carnarvon. Tricky tank, not going to lie. Ephelump knocking out 3.4k. I knocked out 2.6. The T28 was actually AFK. And I think Ephelump for his troubles there, he gets a first class this time rather than a second class. I again get another third class. I'm happy with that though, because it's not an easy tank to play. Anyway, I've been fooded. That has been Carnarvon, the Tier 8 British heavy tank. A notoriously tricky tank to get to grips with. And it's difficult because, as I said, the player base realistically play it like a straightforward heavy. Think VK with all that armour. This thing doesn't have that armour. It really just doesn't. It's got pretty decent turret armour, but it just doesn't have the hull. It also doesn't dish out massive and oodles amount of damage, which is what you normally get with lumbering heavies. This is realistically more of a heavy um, and you've got to play it with that mentality. It's, you know, unless you've got a good ridge to park your backside behind, this is a second line support tank. It's not meant to be up close and brawling with those tanks coming over the top there. This is why I'm just holding back in this game against these action axes. It is a beautiful tank, don't get me wrong. But it, whilst it's a beautiful tank, it'll get you to you know have some good fun, it'll also get you into a world of trouble. And it does get you into a world of trouble. Thing is, like most of the British tanks, you've got to be mindful of the fact it's got that good DPM. It's got that really great reload time. It's got a fantastic aim time. It just doesn't have that lower armour. And that really is the problem with this tank. It is a pure ridgeline fighter. It's a tank that loves to be sat behind a hill and it will purr away. The gun, whilst being a bit of a pew-pew, is actually pretty decent. It's not that bad. And the tank itself with its 10 degrees of gun depression isn't that bad either. So you've just got to be a bit more careful with this one. Anyway, as I said, that has been the Carnarvon. I've been Fujit. By all means, comment and everything below. Comment, because that's what it's all there for. 
Let me know your thoughts on the Carnarvon. And until the next time, guys, remember, it's just a game. So stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that is really what it's all about, guys. Just having fun and being happy.